this woman right here is a former Colorado County clerk by the name of Tina Peters that tried to hack into and tamper with our election system in order to get information over to Mike Lindell of the My Pillow Company, who became a gigantic election conspiracy theorist in support of the Trump movement. And this former clerk, who was supposedly extremely concerned about election security and such, decided to breach our electoral system and violate the very principle that she was trying to supposedly uphold. Let me read you a little bit about the story before showing you the sentencing, because she's been sentenced to nine years in prison for election tampering. Former Mesa County Kirk, Tina Peters, was sentenced to nine years in prison for leading a security breach of the county's election system after being inspired by false and basis claims of voting fraud. Peters was convicted for giving an individual affiliated with MyPillow CEO Mike Lindell, an ally of former President Donald Trump, access to the election software she used for her county. Screenshots of the software appeared on right-wing websites. She was found guilty of most charges of election tampering and misconduct. Your lies are well documented, and these convictions are serious, District Judge Matthew Barrett said. We're going to read the rest of this, but I want to, uh, uh, I want to read about the crime itself. And then we'll listen to the judge because we got the footage of it. We don't need to listen. I mean, listen to me, repeat it. Before being sentenced, Peter took the stand to ask for probation and told the judge she never did anything with malice and believed she was serving the people in Mesa County. I'm not a criminal and I don't deserve to go into a prison where other people have committed heinous crimes, Peter said. The former Mesa County clerk who gave a lengthy and emotional speech told the judge she'd be willing to not talk about elections anymore if sentenced to probation. probation. I really am remorseful, she said. But she cannot say that, like, she's not a criminal, and that what is she remorseful for if she's not a criminal? That doesn't make much sense. Peters became a leading figure fueling false and baseless conspiracy theories about election fraud after the 2020 election. Since then, Peters had held a number of election denial events with Mike Lindell. I came to Colorado today because you have here in Colorado the key to the whole nation, Lindell said in 2022, because you had a great county clerk, Tina Peters, who did her job. Lindell has not been charged in the case. During Thursday's hearing, election denier Douglas Frank, a Lindell associate, said Peters was among many election officials who were understandably concerned about the election. She's no conspirator. She's a patriot. Matt Crane, the executive director of the Colorado County Clerks Association, testified that Peters' actions have led directly to death threats against election officials in the state. We've seen longtime clerks choose retirement due to the flames that Tina has willfully fanned. These people have their jobs made immeasurably harder by what Tina Peters did in her ongoing efforts to fuel the machine that continues to spread lies and disinformation. But most importantly, her actions have contributed to millions of Americans developing a distrust in their elections for no reason. So she joined the Mike Lindell scheme then tried to breach our electoral system, our, ele our, our election machines, tampering with them to try to give that information to Mike Lindell, the last person you should be trusting with that type of secretive information, and now she's being sentenced for it. Now, she believes that she should be put on probation and allowed to walk the streets. The judge disagreed, and she got nine years in prison. And I will tell you, that if you have been furious about the attacks on our uh, democratic institutions, about the squeezing of election officials with death threats, intimidation, and coercion, if you have been angry about the amount of lies and disinformation spread about our elections in order to try to advance certain political candidates who want to choose their own success and power grabbing over the long-term stability of the democracy that's lasted over 350 years, this great experiment and is often referred to, then this video might just be a little bit of pure bliss. Pure. And I'm being blunt, you know, this woman is getting sentenced for nine years. It's gonna be a sad time. But man, if I, tell, if I told you that I didn't feel some amount of justice seeing people who have been fanning the flames that have been just undercutting the institutions that are fundamental for a democratic system to function. If I said that I didn't feel something that felt like justice in my chest, I'd be lying. Watch this. 
Here, the defense has, and Ms. Peters in particular, <coughs> has remained quite defiant, uh, which is her right, uh, but certainly not helpful uh, for her lot today. And in arguing um, why I should impose a particular sentence, uh, she tells me about her ailments, her loss, uh, her struggles uh, in life. But in reality, for those of you who may have been here earlier this morning and seen some of the folks who've occupied that chair before Ms. Peters, there could be not much in the way of a comparison in terms of the type of sympathy uh, one would extend to Ms. Peters. Those folks didn't have four lawyers representing them. They didn't have a team of assistants helping them. They're not getting rides in private jets all over the country. You know, the people who sit in that chair suffer, generally speaking, immeasurable trauma in life, struggle mightily with alcohol abuse, substance abuse, mental health struggles, family loss. They come from broken homes. The cards they were dealt uh, were never the cards that you were dealt, Miss Peters. So when I hear you discuss your husband, sadly passed away recently, your family struggles, and your son, who served our country admirably and made the ultimate sacrifice. I consider it. And I note, too, that he honored his oath to the country, something that is not lost on me when considering the circumstances under which you find yourself here. Your age, limited criminal history, and the like are certainly somewhat mitigating. Your ties to the community are what they are, but your reputation at this point is poor because of what you've done here and after. Your lies are well documented, and these convictions are serious. I'm convinced you would do it all over again if you could. You're as defiant as a defendant as this court has ever seen. You don't have those histories uh, of drug and alcohol abuse. There's no lifetime of trauma, not even close to the type of mitigating circumstances I would see from many folks who sit in that chair. No, to the contrary, Ms. Peters, you are a privileged person. Oof. You are as privileged as they come. And you use that privilege to obtain power, a following, and fame. And to be sure, there's no doubt in my mind that that is exactly what you wanted, and it defies all sense of common sense to believe when you suggested to me a few moments ago that you didn't want this attention. No, you, you crave it, ma'am. And there is no one in this courtroom who would consider that to be anything other than the absolute truth. But to get to the point of what it is that you uh, did here, uh, it's my impression distinctly that you never took your job of clerking particularly seriously. You didn't complete the certification. One scandal after another followed you in uh, your time as the clerk. And ultimately, it was a belief that the echo chamber in which you live couldn't be wrong, mm -hmm. among other things, that led you to do what you did here. This thought process, unfortunately, seems to consume so many in our country, regardless of race, gender, political affiliation, or the like, that what it is we hear and think can't possibly be wrong. There are many things in my mind that are crystal clear about this case. You are no hero, you abused your position, and you're a charlatan. You <laughs> charlatan. and is still using your prior position in office to peddle a snake oil that's been proven to be junk time and time again. In your world, it's all about you. But at bottom, this case was about your corrupt conduct and how no one is above the law. No one in this country has absolute power. Your position as a clerk and recorder, a constitutional position, does not, die, does not in, provide you with a means by which to do your- I'm sorry to pause this, but there's just so much moral condemnation. Uh, charlatan, snake oil, ego, a huge egomaniac it's all about you you crave attention he's just like shooting off the backboard at this point just one after the other after the other after the other you know you maybe i just don't watch many court proceedings i don't know if like at the end of every like traffic ticket violation they're like you clearly did not have the right away 
but as the reckless maniac on the road that you are, like, I imagine that this is, this is quite special, this type of a rant at the end of a case, uh, and usually only happens with pretty serious violations. And to see it happen to a public official, uh, yeah, that's pretty scandalous. And I mean, this woman was touted around as Mike Lindell as like a hero who just did her job. I wonder if he's going to be like calling her like another persecuted individual. If Trump wins, is he going to pardon her? Her own investigation to not listen to the judiciary, to not listen to the executives higher than you, to not listen to the legislature who sets the law as it may be. This is nonsense. Our system of government can't function when people in government think that somehow, some way, the power they've been given is absolute in all respects. And that's where you fell. You have no respect for the checks and balances of government. You have no respect for this court. You have no respect for law enforcement. And you do not have respect for your fellow colleagues when you were a clerk and recorder who weren't lockstep in your beliefs. <coughs> Indeed, just weeks before trial, you were apparently doing what I mentioned earlier, that is over at the clerk and recorder's office where you're not supposed to be violating the protection order by speaking to employees of that entity with your camera crew in tow. You have no qualms with violating uh, the court's orders because you're innocent because you didn't do anything wrong. You were just doing your job. You have no problem trying to kick an officer. Your explanation about what happened is preposterous. It's on video. You have no problem lying to officers. It's happened multiple times. They're recorded conversations. It's just more lies. No objective person believes them. It feels like he's pausing continuously to make sure like every word properly sinks in and she fools the feels the full impact you know in in torture don't ask why do i know this doesn't matter in torture it's not just about like a constant stream of pain right if you get into torture and you just start continuously and endlessly filleting the skin off of people you're not gonna make it big you're not gonna get in the any of the big awards or accolades of the torture community or on the message boards no if you want to, you know, be a good torturer, you give them a bit of pain, then you hold the idea of pain around them, and then the anticipation of pain has a big effect before you then deliver more pain. It's the anticipation of pain. And so, honestly, this reminds me of, like, waterboarding a little bit. This reminds me of the slow drip Chinese water torture. Painful. No, at the end of the day, you cared about the jets, the podcasts, and the people fawning over you. You abdicated your position as a servant to the Constitution, and you chose you over all else. Yes, you are a charlatan, and you cannot help but lie as easy it is for you to breathe. You betrayed your oath Jeez. for no one other. You lie as easy it is for you to breathe. My God. Just is going to be writing diss tracks about, about, the, <laughs> about the defendant. Than you. And this is what makes... Miss Peter is such a danger to our community. It's the position she held that has provided her the pulpit from which she can preach these lies. The undermining of our democratic process. The undermining of the belief and confidence in our election systems. It's not about questioning it. No one says you can't question, you can't ask. It's completely different. And if you don't understand that distinction, then there's nothing I can say or do here today that will change your mind. So the damage that is caused and continue to be caused is just as bad, if not worse, than the physical violence that this court sees on an all too regular basis. And it's particularly damaging when those words come from someone who holds a position of influence like you. <clears throat> Every effort to undermine the integrity of our elections and public's trust in our institutions has been made by you. You've done it from that. Why can't she just ratio him, him in court? Why? Wait, can we hold another rally? Can we? Come on. Can, is a, uh, how about um, uh, the, the judge is in on it. He's deep state too. Lectern 
uh, the voting public provided you with everything you've done has been done to retain control, influence. The damage is immeasurable. And every time it gets refuted, every time it's shown to be false, just another tale is weaved. <clears throat> so I'll begin by saying I've considered all of those purposes of uh, stain of an execution of a sentence. Uh, I've mentioned all of them here generally Snap. in my I comments. thought, oh, <laughs> for a second, I, I misheard that. It's like, I've granted your stay of execution. <laughs> Whoa, my goodness, this judge is not playing around. Oh my God, Judge Guillotine over here. No, 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 okay, sorry. <laughs> Already, and I find that a stay of any sentence I impose would be wholly unwarranted. The old, <laughs> the tree of liberty must be watered with the blood of tyrants. <laughs> There is only one penalty for treason. It starts banging the desk. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Nah, nah, not happening today. All cases have a possibility of reversal on appeal, no doubt. I'm at peace with all the decisions I've made here. If anything, I gave you and your counsel far too much leeway at times, but the rulings I made came at, after much consideration, incredible amounts of internal debate, and I trust in accordance with the applicable law. I consider the sentence uh, here, in this case, uh, what are available to me. Probation. Community corrections wasn't requested, but uh, it wouldn't be an option in any event, and an incarcerative sentence to the Department of Corrections. Probation's focus is rehabilitation. That is, for folks who have minimal criminal histories, low LSI scores like you, Ms. Peters, but where uh, punishment isn't really on the table. It's about putting someone back in the community who's not a risk and giving them a chance to correct those things that brought them before me in the first place. Community corrections, which again isn't available, but nevertheless I'll mention is another option that I could still order. It's much more stringent than probation, but it's not prison. And it's for folks who have even higher needs. Again, drug addicts, alcohol abusers, and the like. And prison is for those folks where we send people who are a danger to all of us. Whether it by, be by the pen or the sword or the word of the mouth. Prison is where folks go, where punishment is what we're focused on because the crime committed is so significant that anything less would unduly mitigate the seriousness of the same. I mentioned before there are no mental health concerns. There's no good reason why you're here, Ms. Peters, other than these are all the active decisions that you made that cost our county significantly, but all- What it would mental health concern? I'm sorry, I was really bipolar this morning and I, you know, I decided that I was going to, you know, disengage in a little election tampering. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Well, I mean, who doesn't, you know? Oh, I was- uh, you know, my ADHD was acting up and I decided to, you know, just fumble and stumble into some election tampering. Also, more importantly, cost you greatly. Yeah, have you checked the moon cycle? That had a big impact, you know? Mr. Wood, all the members of the county who worked uh, and trusted you when you asked them to do things that they did on your behalf, it's part of your lies. The expense, the toll is immeasurable. So putting you on probation when you have zero needs that would be met by probation is the very definition of unduly depreciating the significance of what it is that you've done here. The harm that you've caused our community and continue to cause. Community corrections is the same. So prison is the only place that duly meets the purposes of sentencing in this matter and therefore the sentence and judgment of the court is as follows. As to counts one and four, the judgment and sentence of the court is three and a half years in the Department of Corrections. Those sentences will be concurrent to each other. As to count two, the judgment and sentence of the court is three and a half years consecutive to counts one and four. Six years. As it relates uh, to the misdemeanor charges, count eight is 120 days. Oof. in the Mesa County Detention Facility. For like seven years now. Concurrent to count nine and 10, which will be six months in the Mesa County Detention Up Facility. Towards eight. Consecutive to the prison sentence. The reason those sentences are consecutive 
We're not a is nine yet. because those sentences are, as the prosecution stated, directly related to what it is wrong? that you did here in our community, What's the damage you caused, this community, the breach of your oath to the electorate in Mesa checking. County. Your sentence will be followed by three years of parole. You have two days of pre-sentence confinement credit. Anything I missed? Anything else we need to address? Judge, I think you missed a sentencing on, on count six. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Count okay. six is criminal impersonation. That's also consecutive. That's uh, 15 months to the Department oh, of Corrections. Oh, man. And the so it's eight and a half years total. Oops, almost forgot another year of your life. Here you go. Uh, plus the six months for a total of nine years of incarceration. And I think the only other thing is the cost of prosecution, Your Honor. Is there an objection to the cost of prosecution, Mr. Case? We can set it for hearing if you need to. Has Russia granted her like? Uh, well, has Russia granted her asylum yet? Um, if you need to have time to respond to it, I can give you that as well. Yeah, we do because we don't understand how that was calculated. Very well. I'll give you 21 days to file an objection to the cost of prosecution. You can consult that with the prosecutor. If Nothing there's else. an objection, we'll set it for a hearing. Nothing else, Mr. Case. Anything else? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We have a, a motion previously filed for a stay, which I believe. I just denied that. <laughs> <laughs> just shot. Just immediately shot down. Oh my gosh. Oof. My God, couldn't even get any work. You can't get anything in there. Also, uh, look at this picture I found. That seems to be that woman. Hmm. There's probably nothing to be concerned about here. It makes sense that Donald Trump would know the county clerk here. Okay. We, we watched the sentencing and the judge tearing her a new one. But what we did not do is watch what led to the judge tearing her a new one. Because I was pretty surprised to see the judge be so, um, I would just say, uh, ruthless in tearing her a new one. Calling her a charlatan, you know, calling her just a liar outright multiple times. Just again and again, and just saying like, did, she, did she, he was tearing her up. And I, I was trying to figure out, like, I understand that what she did was bad and she deserves consequences. But this feels even like a little aggressive for the judge. And so I went and I did some snooping, and this is what I found. And when I said I did some snooping, I mean I scroll on social media. And that's as all good researchers do. And I found this video from Ron Filipowski. He reposted it of the judge having a back and forth interaction with Tita Peters, where she tries to put words in the judge's mouth, saying that he also agrees that the election was stolen to the judge's befuddlement. And when you see this type of interaction, you can start to understand why he was so uh, firm. In the machine. Whatever it tabulates is whatever it tabulates. No, it doesn't. It changes. You're not letting me finish. Okay, Whatever please. it tabulates is whatever it tabulates. My hand vote, my ballot remains the same. They counted those ballots. I Did they not? I understand what you're saying, Did Your Honor. Did they count the ballots? No, the ballot images were changed, and that's what the total shows. Okay, I'll move off of this because I can see that it, you know, I would encourage to read uh, the report number three. I've read them, ma'am. You've read all of them? I've read those reports. They were given to me at some point, I believe. Good, good. Well, so you know what I'm saying is true. <laughs> all right, let me move on. It's not funny. My life is on the line here, Your Honor. No, you're the one who's making this allegation that one, it's I think not it's an funny, allegation. and two, that I know it's true. You're saying that as if I believe you, and I did not say that. Okay. That is why oh. I made the sound, because it's insulting to me for you to just put that in a record in front of all of these people that I believe something to be true. Okay, and I apologize for that, Your Honor. That wasn't my intent. I, I do apologize for that. Okay, yeah, I think I understand. My goodness, how do you go, how do you try to do that? To, do, what did she think was gonna happen there? This isn't a Twitter debate. We're not in a Twitter space or on a Discord call in some like politics Discord where you could just like, you get a quick zinger in there like, you know I'm telling the truth or man, I just wrecked this debate. No, it, it, this, is a, this is a court procession. Did you, did you think that uh, the person keeping the record, the record keeper in the court, like later they'd go to sentence and it'd be like, 
But judge, it does say here that she was that you thought that she was right. Oh no, I didn't counteract it. I guess you're free to go. What's the end game here? Is it all performance? Does she just see cameras and immediately think like, okay, it's time to fight? The attention is on her, so she just gets out there and just starts spewing the vial. She's like a sovereign citizen. I mean, the MAGA movement does just kind of feel like, you know, the light, the diet version of the sovereign citizen movement at times. When you start to listen to their electioneering theories. It'll, uh, it'll get real when she doesn't have mackerels to pay for protection. I like how he talked about other people that have sat in that seat and she had a team of lawyers. It's true. He's talking about like he's seen so many drug addicts. He's seen so many abuse victims. He's seen so many people so poor and, and who have had a rough upbringing to a point that you'd expect to see them in there because of the conditions that led to them being there. This is, of course, not taking away any responsibility. But, I mean, there's a difference between a druggie or drug addict, you know, going and stealing to feed a habit and an elected official lying and engaging in election interference. Like the conditions that one is doing it to feed a sickness, the other is doing it to feed their ego. It's a totally different scenario. She reminds me of my mom arguing with the judge in divorce court. I am so sorry, Abigail. Somebody gift her a sub. They're not sending their best, you're right. They aren't sending their best. They aren't.